Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather. We've got heavy snow moving through uh, the Wasatch right now. That's your live camera up at uh, Alta. They're reporting 15 inches of new snow in the last 24 hours, 17 inch storm total. And you probably still have about another seven to eight inches to go tonight. Then we'll start talking about the next surge of moisture moving in. Here's your uh, water vapor. So you're looking at the oranges and reds. That's going to be your uh, drier air aloft. Let me just draw in some of the features here. So there's your low right there producing uh, producing all that snow through Utah. It's the one that came out of California, uh, coming out of California with all of that atmospheric river moisture and train with it. There's another big storm system right here that will be the final in this atmospheric river series. And it will it potentially could bring in um, two different surges, one to two different surges between 13, 14, 15, 16, and maybe 17. There may be two separate pieces with that as it rolls in, and there's still going to be atmospheric river moisture associated with it. Um, it looks like it'll have a moderate surge with it as it comes in. So that's part of my headlines here. Um, take a look at uh, the bullet points. One to two more surges coming in um, on top of what we've seen so far here happening today. Um, and in both of those surges will have uh, kind of a weak to moderate intensity to them. And then the flow will fade. The, the river contribution will fade after 117. And the pattern will look completely different. I'll show you the jet stream. In fact, let me just show you that now while we're talking about it. So here's the jet on 119. Totally different, uh, big ridge in the jet flow over the uh, the west now, and it's reaching way up into British Columbia, and then it's going north to south across the Intermountain West. I mean, this is completely different. Um, like I said, the flow will uh, fade, and the river will be disconnected after 117, as it looks right now. Let me take you back here um, to the blog. I actually published this this morning. Um, the river continues through 117, then fades. It still holds true. ChrisTomer.com if you want to take a look at this. Uh, but the big totals continue. I talked about those this morning. I mean, even this morning, Mammoth was reporting uh, 31 to 46 inches of snow. Same storm system that's producing the snow in Utah. Same one. Same one that's producing the snow in Colorado, in Wyoming. It's a large storm system. There's the flow. Um, there's the pattern. Actually, I showed you the updated jet compared to what we're seeing there, but it's somewhat similar. Um, this has been an incredible 10 to 15 day atmospheric river pattern, but it does fade eventually. And you can see it here in the, the forecast and the bright colors, basically what you're looking at are IVT, integrated vapor transport over 15 days based on latitudes. You can see um, that there's still more through 1, 15, 16, and then after the 17th, it really fades and there's not much behind it. So take a look at that on the blog. Um, I want to look at timing. Take this full. Here's the future or forecast radar and satellite. So this is Wednesday at 6. Snow still moving through Colorado and Utah and that it fades. There's Thursday morning at 6. Friday morning at 6. There's the 13th. Waves of moisture start to hit the west coast, the Pacific Northwest. And here comes that final storm system in the series. 114, 15, probably 16. Um, you can see it's large. Look at the spin just off the coast of the Pacific Northwest. And there's a lot of snow moving through the interior with this. One more time, just briefly. There's the morning of uh, the 11th. Here comes Thursday morning. Here comes Friday morning. And look at all that precip in the Pacific Northwest and BC. And then here it comes 14, 15, 16. It makes its move and then hits the interior uh, with a lot of snowfall. All right, let's take a look at uh, totals forecast totals the rest of today through the 12th another seven to eight to go in the the wasatch uh, potentially another seven to eight to go up in the tetons as well in colorado two to ten i'll probably do with most of that happening across the western slope and in california um, you're already starting to see the effects of the next storm in shasta with another 28 coming in through the 12th now this is a big period here this is period two so this would be this would account for um, the next and final storm system in the series. Um, so another two to three, maybe four feet in the Sierra. Um, some big totals yet to uh, come down there. And another couple of feet in the Wasatch. So on top of what you've seen, you may have another couple of feet coming in the Wasatch. 113 through 119, another foot up in the Tetons. Pretty good snow through the Pacific Northwest, Whistler. Uh, Baker could see uh, about three feet of snow coming. Um, and I've actually seen the numbers go up a little bit for Banff, now looking at anywhere from 5 to 9 inches 
through this second period. In Colorado, the western slope, the southwest mountains are going to get nailed with probably one to two feet of snow through that period. And actually, I've got a pretty big number for Snowball and Brian Head during that period, assuming the storm stays on that southern type of uh, track or at least pushes moisture through the southern tier. All right, let me just show you what it looks like in the northeast. You got a little bit of snow coming, two to probably nine inches of accumulation, but nothing huge. I just don't see any big storms, and there's going to be some mixing. That's why the numbers are held down. But your best numbers are going to be in northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, northern Maine. All right, guys, there you go. Thank you for tuning in here for this afternoon update. Take care.